Oh shoot. Okay. Episode one. Okay, Episode one. okay. you guys ready? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Dr. Girlfriend. I'm Judy, and today we are launching season three of the podcast. Woo! <laughs> So this season, we're coming back with a new format. We're doing in-person interviews, no more Zoom sessions. We have a new set. We have new topics to cover. And this season's theme is going to be social media. So what better way to launch the season with none other than the one, the only, Dr. Ernest Kim. Welcome, Yay. welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. Yeah, so tell everyone um, what you do, what you're all about. Um, yeah, anything you want to share. Um, yep, yeah, I'm a chiropractor acupuncturist and a uh, transformation coach. Ooh, yeah. transformation. Oh, I didn't yes. know that. <laughs> what does a transformation coach entail? It's, it's like a, it, it's like a cross between a life coach and a spiritual coach. Mm. And so instead of just calling it uh, a spiritual coach, I feel like I could combine the two and call it transformation coach because we don't always have to go spiritual. We don't always have to go, you know, Interesting. out there, but we can kind of combine the two yeah cool yeah i did not know that yeah. well okay that ties into what i was about to talk to you about yeah. um do you remember you probably don't remember our session because you see so many patients um but i remember when i came to visit you i got adjusted for the first time everything was like normal right yeah do you do you know what i'm gonna say yeah do you remember <laughs> i kind of <Okay>. do <laughs> <laughs> so yeah everything was good and then towards the end you're like can i can i tell you something and then I was like, oh, shoot, like, what is this going to be about, right? I was like, do I have, like, some type of disease that I don't know about? And he's going to tell me, because you, you were kind of apprehensive about it. You're like, I don't know. It might be a little personal. I was like, just tell me, just tell me. And then you're like, do you remember what you said? I did. What, what did you say? It's, I think I said something like, um, you have to open yourself up to, to like, meeting people. Like, yeah, yeah, day. yeah, like, yeah. Like, and that came out of nowhere. <laughs> we did not know each other prior. We had no conversations of anything about that sort of realm so what like what provoked you to say that okay so <laughs> <laughs> first of all we, we got to put in the context yes yes right? yes please <laughs> do please do because <laughs> this could be taken out of context but, <laughs> but basically that's kind of different from the coaching so i did i took the course the course on coaching because i found myself working on patients and kind of speaking more about personal life mm -hmm. and their emotions and their past and I felt like I needed a way to bridge the two, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm, I'm not trying to do therapy or psychology, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But I guess uh, for me, when I'm working on people and I'm kind of tuning in, listening to their body, um, I can sense and pick up on sometimes thoughts, energy, memories, emotions, past traumas. That's crazy. And things that Sorry, just kinda that's crazy. <laughs> and, and it's not something that like I try to do. It's just I'm open. I'm present uh -huh. and it just kind of comes up interesting. and what's interesting is people will come in with you know neck pain or back pain or this and when something comes up regarding that like a lot of times it's related to past trauma mm -hmm. or a past memory or a loved one that's passed and that they haven't fully processed and now it's lodged in your neck yeah yeah so it comes up in the session and when i ask them about it we try to connect the dots like how mm -hmm. does this relate to why you're here yeah. and oftentimes there's a connection so for you, <laughs> I wasn't trying to pry into your dating yeah, yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but, you were very respectful about it, and I was open to your whatever you had to say. But I just yeah. thought it was interesting. Like, was it my energy or like my back, like the tense, like where I was having like holding stress, or what about it? Like, how do you channel that? Um, it's a little bit of both. Okay. So it's a little bit of what I'm palpating physically, but it's also sometimes I can just pick up just based on like your energy your aura okay. you know for you like i just felt really strongly that there was this sense of um how do i say it like say it just say it <laughs> just say it you're like, probably right protecting closing off yeah yeah, yeah. you know and I, I but here's the, here's the thing a lot of times when i ask them you know hey this is what i'm feeling can you relate to this a lot of times they'll say, I, I've been thinking about this or the thought mm -hmm. has crossed my mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so for you, I felt like it's something you were thinking about that you're maybe kind of pondering or maybe kind of just thinking about in your head. Like mm. maybe this is something I'm ready for, maybe not. Yeah. Um, but I felt like there was a struggle, like internal oh, struggle. So I just there felt like- There still is. And I, <laughs> 
<laughs> and I yeah. didn't want to bring that up, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because we're, because I just met you that yeah, day. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You know, I can be kind of taken out of context, right? Yeah. I'm a guy and I'm like asking you about your yeah, dating yeah, life. Yeah, for sure. But sometimes um, I just get this strong urge to say it. Mm -hmm. Like a lot, of, a lot of times I'll just like, oh, I don't want to say that, but yeah. the urge will be there and just, just won't go away. Interesting. And so then I'll say it and nine times out of 10, person will be really receptive to it or yeah. say yes like i have i been think i was like that, so. <laughs> i think i was like defensive <laughs> I, was, like, I forgot how i reacted <laughs> no i think you were laughing yeah yeah yeah. i like, thought it was like out of nowhere i was yeah, very yeah, yeah. taken off guard because i had no idea what to expect like it was my first time getting adjusted so then yeah. on the way home i was thinking about what you said a lot and i'm yeah. like was i giving off like this like what type of energy am i giving off to the universe yeah. like you know people ask that too like do I seem like somebody that, you know, like, like for instance, if I picked up on like, you're kind of, um, I don't know, like, uh, stressed about money or something yeah, like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they'll say like, do I look like that? Like, yeah, am yeah, I yeah. giving off that vibe? But how do you know it's and about money? Like you, you, I guess you can sense that someone's stressed about something and the way they like react and stuff. Yeah. But how do you know it's about money? All right. Uh, you want to go there? Yeah. Yeah. I want to <laughs> know. I'm so deep? interested. Yeah. We okay, all want to know. All right. We can go there. Because I saw, okay, his videos, you need to see his videos. Like, um, there was a video where, um, he's just adjusting someone and then you're like, uh, what did you say? You're like, either like, are you getting a house or like, are you, do you, ha are you starting a new business venture? And it's like out of nowhere. You're yeah, like, how, yeah. I'm like, how do you know it's a business? Okay. Adventure? So first of all, yeah, we all have this ability to, to one degree or, or another. Yeah. Okay. Some people can see it's called clairvoyance. Yeah. Some people can hear clairaudience. Mm -hmm. Some people can sense, feel, touch clairsentient. And some people just have like a knowing Okay. that just comes okay. so for me it's uh, a combination of the the touch the knowing and the hearing Whoa. so it's not like i will hear a voice necessarily yeah. but i might hear a word so sometimes it's like the word like i'll hear a word you know like money or um or in your case it was like relationship <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, so yeah, yeah. but they're all symbolic because it's not it's not logical like we're getting this message, I guess you could say, from a higher power, mm -hmm. different source, mm -hmm. and that is not communicated through like English or you know because this this is communicated in all types of languages and all different um, cultures, so it's like symbolic, and so that's why I ask, does mm -hmm. this resonate for you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we try to piece it together. Interesting. So, yeah. How did you know you had this ability? Um, or is it something that you had to train yourself to work on, like to hear the signs or whatever? I think to some extent, it was kind of natural for me, like being sensitive growing up, you uh -huh. know, and just feeling things. And um, I mean, everyone has this, like when yeah. you're around someone with like negative energy, you can kind of feel it, like, oh, yeah. uh, I don't like the situation. I don't like this person. Yeah. Right. And then sure enough, something happens. Or if you're ever walking and you feel like someone's behind you or someone's looking at you and mm -hmm. you turn and someone is, yep, yep. that's intuition, right? Yeah. That's not your brain. That's not logic. Um, so I think everyone has this to a certain degree mm -hmm. and then you can fine tune it How? through lifestyle, you know, through oh. your diet, through um, meditating or rest or creativity, wh whatever the medium is for you, mm -hmm. you can kind of sharpen your sword, I guess you could say, yeah, to yeah, develop yeah. that. Yeah. <sighs> Cool. What so, kind of diet should I be eating then to <laughs> sharpen up my skills? <laughs> it depends. Yeah. On what? I, I don't think there's like one diet good okay. for everyone, right? Uh -huh. There's people that will tell you like being vegan or, you know, paleo or this is the best. I think what's best is what's best for you. Like what for makes some, you feel good? Yeah. For yeah, some yeah, people, yeah. not eating meat is what their body wants. Mm -hmm. It's what their body needs. Yeah. For some people, they need meat, right? right? So I don't think there's a specific diet yeah. but i guess you could say generally speaking less um processed food processed foods yeah, yeah, yeah. less sugar yeah. less caffeine um, <laughs> moderation <laughs> like, everything okay, in moderation okay. alcohol <laughs> <laughs> moderation so yeah that's uh that's what we're looking for i yeah. see so like i'm very fascinated by this whole like what do you call it like uh what do you call that that skill that you have you know what um I don't have a name for it, but, <laughs> but I'm thinking of actually naming it because I oh, think, okay. yeah, I think it's something that can be kind of, um, I don't want to say taught, but it could be something that, yeah, I feel like I, I could create something to help other people yeah. kind of learn it in your own way and uh -huh. then apply it. Because I think when it comes to, um, you know, helping people, putting hands on people, it's more than just like the adjustment. It's yeah. more than just 
you know touching them and there's so much more to it mm-hmm. and i think um if you learn to listen yeah you'll you'll be able to pick up on stuff interesting so. but, but you don't um for your sessions you don't do that for everybody right only if you feel a strong sense of something yeah and you feel like you want to say it yeah but generally every new patient that comes in for me i uh, think something comes up now really yeah, yeah. so I, maybe I, because I, you practice it so much that it just it's like yeah second maybe nature. but i think yeah. everyone comes in with you know if you come in with my neck is hurting my back is hurting it's very rare that it's purely a physical issue mm. unless you you know fell like while you're snowboarding or something and yeah, then you yeah, came yeah. in the next day yeah even then might not be purely physical right i believe that yeah 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 um so yeah it comes up pretty much every person that comes in almost yeah um so yeah i'm thinking maybe like intuitive wellness intuitive chiropractic or intuitive mm. something do you have to tie it into chiro- do you have to feel where the tense like the stress is or can you do it without like if you just met someone new yeah do you get that sense or it has to be part of your work um so there's a way to turn it on and turn it off. Oh, so like okay. in my everyday life, I just I turn it off. How do right? you turn it off? Well, you just... <laughs> <laughs> Good question, because sometimes you can't. Oh, but when okay. I meet someone, I'm not trying to like be present. I'm not trying to feel. You know, I'm just, just doing normal activity. Yeah. So now it's become more specific where it's in my office only. Mm. And sometimes, yeah, as soon as I walk in the room and I see somebody, sometimes it just already happens. Yeah. But... Yeah, I've, I've learned to kind of turn it off outside of the office. Okay, and that's also, good. like Because it's draining for you, right? It's draining, but yeah, there's yeah. also, like, respect for the other person. You have to ask. So yeah. I often ask them, like, are you open to this kind of stuff? Does anyone Before, ever say no, though? I haven't had anyone say exactly. no. Exactly. Like, of course. Like, but it's surprising because there's it doesn't matter, like, what religious belief or, like, what background you come from. Because I used to be kind of worried this could be too out there for some people. Mm. Um, I haven't had anyone that said no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? well, I think the way you present it is not in a way that like, oh, this is like, this is my belief. So like, you're not like putting your belief. You're just kind of like sharing your thoughts on like what you've observed. Because for right. me, when you asked me, I just thought it was like something you uh, observed through my back or something. I don't know. Right, yeah. Um, so I think you do a good job of that. Thanks. But does anyone, is there ever a time where like, like something really bad comes to your head and you're like, ooh, I want to tell her, but like maybe like, your husband's cheating on you or something like that <laughs> <laughs> or like your business venture is gonna fail um well here's the thing uh when things come up it's meant to be said it's meant to help mm. them in some way mm-hmm. so yeah sometimes it's not the best news i guess i guess you could say but yeah. it's never going to be something that is going to harm them or that's something that it's not going to make sense for them yeah you know yeah, so yeah. it's not going to be like hey you're going to lose all your money tomorrow. It's not like that. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. it's going to be maybe, hey, you might want to be careful about how you're spending your money right now or something to that effect, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I do feel like growing up, I've always had this, like, not six... Okay, this is stupid, but, like, I've always felt like... Okay, dreams is a big thing for me. Growing up, I've yes. always had dreams. Every single day, I dream and I remember them. Okay. So. If I have a dream where I wake up and I feel like a very strong emotion, I feel like that means something like and and I've had dreams where like um, I didn't talk to the person. I haven't talked to them for a long time and I dream about them. I'm like, oh, that's weird that they showed up in my dream. And then they contact me like, you know, things that you've heard stuff like that all the time. And like for me, it's like dreams. And like for some reason, I think like I always say that like when like my family members pass away, I want to be able to see them like or speak to them. And I do feel have a strong feeling that I will see them in my dreams or they'll communicate with me through my dreams or something. Yeah, it's not stupid at all. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. Yeah. How, so how does someone channel, like, how do I harness that? Do you write, do you write them down? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a, I write down exactly what happened and how it made me feel like the emotions that I felt once I like wake up and like the emotions are so strong that I, I like feel like I need to write them down before I forget. Okay. Do you kind of, do you, do you go back and read them? Sometimes I do. Okay, because sometimes yeah. I you probably have messages in your dreams that you go back and read, mm-hmm. and um, you might pick up on stuff that you, d- you didn't notice. You yeah. know? So how do you hone? So think of it like that we're all capable of tuning into it if we tried, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like um, for for instance, um, creative people, people who like let's say they paint or they do art. Yeah. A lot of times they're getting inspiration. Um, they're channeling. Mm-hmm. you know so sometimes they even see the picture in their head before they draw it right that's a mm. form of clairvoyance I you know see. so we all have this ability it just manifests in our own way in mm-hmm. our own talent 
I bet when you see some of your patients, sometimes yeah. you have a sense of why they're here or why it happened mm-hmm. or what caused it or what they could do differently. Yeah. Right. Yeah, That's yeah. not just something you learn in school. Mm-hmm. Um, for some people um, in business, you know, they know like this is the type of client that I know I can close a deal with or I should say this. So it, it shows in many different ways. Yeah. How do you kind of harness it so it's more consistent in your everyday life um, through your lifestyle? So if you think of our mind and body as like a vessel, right, a medium, like an antenna, we want to keep it as clear as possible. Mm -hmm. So through what we eat, what we put into our bodies, what we put into our heads, the thoughts we have, are we getting enough rest? Do we have enough time to clear our minds, you know, whether that's through meditating, yoga, breathing exercises, whatever it is for you? Mm -hmm. Um, I think if you combine all of that, you will become more of a, a, a clear kind of receptive channel i guess or vessel for information to come in i was going to ask you is there ever a time where you get um like a what do you call it like a a sign or something and it's completely wrong a sign that it's completely for yourself your personal experience not for your patients oh for myself yeah um yeah because you have to because sometimes the mind will you have to kind of decipher is this the mind or is this my intuition Mm -hmm. you know and sometimes the mind will kind of convince you that it is yeah you know well the thing is like with my dreams sorry I keep going back to my dreams but like with my dreams like you know so I've had many instances where it actually like happens like I dream about someone and then they contact me so then there was one time I had a dream where my mom's car got she got high carjacked and then I was like oh my gosh like so and I wasn't like in the area so I like I didn't want to tell her to scare her, but I wanted to tell her to be careful, right? Yeah. So the whole day I was so nervous and everything, and then like I kept calling her, and she's like, "Why are you calling me and stuff?" But in the end, nothing ended up happening. Okay. So like those are the times where I'm like, "Do I tr- Do I listen to this dream or do I not?" Yeah. Sometimes the yeah. signs are not completely like you know. Yeah. Well, you know, with dreams, I think sometimes it's symbolic. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> sometimes it's like a premonition. I've had dreams like where something was going to happen and did happen, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. which is like, whoa. Those are scary because you're like, every time you dream, you think that that's going to happen. Yeah. But sometimes they're symbolic. So sometimes mm. it's not about them, it's yeah. about us. Oh, yeah. I always but look at my dreams. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe that was symbolic for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's scary because you don't know if it's symbolic or a premonition, yeah, right? Yeah, but if you maybe went back and read what you wrote, maybe you could figure out what mm. it was. And maybe you can, the more you do that, the more you can kind of get better at it, maybe. I see, yeah. I see. Hello, everybody. I am interrupting the podcast to share something with y'all. As you know, I'm a pediatric dentist, and the number one question I always get asked is to how to get my children to brush. My answer has always been to make brushing fun for the children. And that's why I was so excited when I found out about the Toothbrush Circus. The author of The Toothbrush Circus is a mom herself who was struggling with getting her child to brush and thought of a solution through storytelling. What makes The Toothbrush Circus so unique is that it hides the toothbrush agenda through a fun and interactive story. In the book, kids have to brush in order to save the circus. I personally love the book because it's super interactive, the rhymes are super clever, and the illustrations are gorgeous and full of fun details. But the most important thing is that it actually works to get the children excited about brushing. I was reading the Amazon reviews and one parent shared that after reading the book to their child, they were so excited to brush, which makes oral hygiene more pleasant for not only the kids, but parents as well. So if you have young children who loves picture books, I highly recommend this book. It also would make a really cute gift if you made a little dental kit with this book along with some floss, toothbrushes, and timers for the children. And the Toothbrush Circus also has a fun activity book. So make sure you guys grab The Toothbrush Circus by Alina Lux, available in both paperback and hardcover on Amazon. Links will be in the captions below. Now, back to the podcast. So is that like your next venture to like kind of train people how to do that? Yeah, that is. Oh, it is. Yeah, I want to have... So my next venture is two things. I want to have an online kind of course maybe about Mm -hmm. something like this. Mm Um, maybe have a, I don't know, a book maybe about Ooh. it. And and then my other thing I'm thinking of doing is having an online course on like social media, kind yeah, of what we're yeah, going to yeah. talk about today. Yes, yeah, yeah. social media. Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, t- tell me how you use social media and then like basically what it's done for you, what you sure. like about it, what you don't like about it. So first of all, um, I'm a very kind of private person mm-hmm. and 
I had this whole thing of like, do I put my personal life out there yes. or just my professional life? Yeah. So for a while, I had my personal account on yeah. Instagram that was mm-hmm. private, yeah. and then I had my business account that was public. Yeah. And then I started um, thinking, okay, like let me start putting myself out there a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it took me three years yeah. to make my first ever like YouTube video. Yeah. And I started off kind of doing like talks, like lifestyle, health, Mm. Um, wellness like trying to inspire and that's how I first started making videos this was about six years ago okay so the funny thing is um, with chiropractic when you're in school they drill into your head that like people are scared of the adjusting noises you know uh the sounds Uh so be careful explain to them what it is and some people freak out and so I never thought like making videos of that would be a good idea because oh I didn't want to so scare good. people, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, that's why in the beginning I thought, hmm, what can I do? Like, what can I make? Yeah. And so it wasn't about my treatment. It was about, you know, giving talks. So yeah. that was like six years ago. Yeah. And then it's hard to kind of be consistent with that. You always have to be inspired and mm-hmm. have material ready, mm-hmm. right? So after a while, that kind of just faded out. Right. And then it took another three years okay. before I decided okay, let's do something else. Let's mm-hmm. shift gears, yeah. which was this year. So early this year, I decided, you know what? I'm going to post more videos on the treatment. Yeah. So that's when I started posting more of the chiropractic videos. Yeah, and they yeah. do really well. They're just all of you adjusting. And then the, that's funny that they teach you that the sound scares people because that's like, every does, don't people tell, comment all the time that it's so satisfying to hear that? It is. Yeah, yeah I do. Um, so I, I guess it's, there is still people who are scared. They see that and go, no way. Yeah, yeah and there's people yeah. that, you know, don't touch my neck. And, and so, <laughs> yeah, there still is a stigma yeah. around that because it looks like the movies where you twist someone's neck yeah, and you yeah, kill yeah. them. And like, yeah. right? but by the way, um, it's pretty much impossible to do that. Oh, really? Because our bones are so thick, right? Our vertebrae are so thick mm-hmm. that I would have to be able to crush your bones with my fingers to yeah. be able to kill you. You know, mm-hmm. I could hurt your muscles if I mess up. Um, yeah. But there is another way where the blood vessel can be severed. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah. Um, so people think they can die from getting adjusted well, on so, their neck? Yeah. Well, let me address that. So there is a way where your blood vessel can get severed, mm-hmm. right? But this is kind of controversial because there's not enough um, studies on it. But the studies that have been done on it show that a lot of these people come in, either it's already partially severed oh. or they're showing symptoms that it's weak yeah. right um and so for those people a manipulation could sever it falling down could sever it a lot of them actually have trauma before they come mm-hmm. in they fell yeah, which yeah, is yeah. you know they can go to the their regular doctor and it can get severed just from doing the test yeah. right so is it the adjustment that severed it or yeah, you know yeah. what is it right so th- th- there's a controversy around that because the news will take it and go you know chiropractor killed this person through mm-hmm. a neck adjustment yeah but if you look at the statistics on that it's like one in a million mm-hmm. so it's extremely rare yeah. it does happen though so i can't deny that but it does yeah. happen yeah do you find that people who come in with already that mentality like they're scared yeah. have a less pleasant experience or do you kind of turn it around and they're like oh that was not as bad as i thought so for those people i give them the option we don't have to do the neck Oh. Right when you say, "Hey, we don't have to adjust areas that you don't want. Yeah, we can just do your mid back or low back. They're they're okay with it. Mm-hmm. And my style is not just adjustment only. I do a lot of muscle work. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. do a lot of stretching, breaking up scar tissue, yeah. which to me I think is really important than only doing adjustments. Mm-hmm. Right. So for those people, we can do a whole full session without doing any cracks. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So like. How does social media help your business? I'm sure you get a lot of like influencers who come hit you up yeah, or so, vice versa. So, you know, going back to all of that, um, this year I decided I'm going to showcase my, you know, my work inside the office more mm-hmm. so than me talking. Yeah. And I started using a mic. Mm-hmm. And that made a huge difference because yeah. the, the sound is amplified and you can really hear the crunch yeah. you know, from the adjustment. And it, it's satisfying to watch it's right? so satisfying because there's some part of us when we watch something like our brain processes it yeah. so it's almost like you know like when you watch people eat food yeah I do that all the <laughs> time some people, like, it's like yeah. it satisfies your cravings in some way I think it's similar it's almost like you get that relief from watching it mm-hmm. and so I started posting that kind of content more consistently and yeah I just started gaining momentum picking up it's crazy and so yeah, yeah it's really helped now I have um, a lot of people Third. finding me yeah yeah driving flying to flying come really yeah, yeah and, and i'm kind of like you know like you don't have to do that yeah that's you know, yeah, i can yeah, help yeah. you find I, somebody I, yeah, in your yeah, area yeah. 
you know i was gonna say do you feel like that's a lot of pressure it's like it's it is yeah. it's a lot it's in a way it is but in, a, in other ways it's like uh, like i'm doing this not so like you have to come see me i'm doing this to kind of spread awareness mm-hmm. that there's treatment like this out there yeah, right? yeah. it doesn't have to be through me yeah. only Maybe they you know? want that clairvoyant part of that session <laughs> you know that you what? do. Okay. <laughs> but you don't really... For that? All right, come see me. But the funny thing <laughs> is you don't really advertise that part, but that part's the part where I find the most like interesting. I'm and starting then, yeah. yeah, I'm starting to share that a little bit more. Yeah, because I yeah. think that's I think that's that important. sets you apart. Yeah, it's yeah. important. And, and that's why I'm going to start doing long form videos like on YouTube mm-hmm. and maybe kind of show more of that on yeah. there. Yeah. Do you think social media is important for people in healthcare? Yeah. I do. Um, kind of going back to what I was saying, like how I never thought people would be interested in mm-hmm. seeing my, my videos. Um, I think nowadays social media is like the new business card. Mm-hmm. You know, people want to see, it doesn't matter if you have a huge following or not. They just want to see like, what's your office about? What do you offer? They kind of want to connect with you before they come and see you. Yeah. you know, before you tell someone, go see Dr. Judy, she's amazing they'll just go right mm-hmm. and then after that it became go see dr judy they'll look you up see your reviews yeah. and then they'll go yeah, yeah now yeah. i feel like they look you up and then they look at your socials now. yeah just to crazy. see like you know can i see some videos of her can i see some pictures of her mm-hmm. staff mm-hmm. can i connect with her before i go mm-hmm. so i think it's so important now to have a profile you don't have to like post all the time or yeah. have a lot of you know amazing content or a lot of followers but you should have something so that people can refer to you and, and kind of see check you out a little bit, mm-hmm. and I think that's what's happened um, with me is people have, you know, started watching my videos and they connect with me, and mm-hmm. then they feel like there's like kind of like a relationship where like they know me, yeah, and then they'll come and schedule an appointment. So even mm-hmm. if they weren't planning to do, to do that from the beginning, after a while they just kind of want to do that, yeah, because yeah, they become yeah. familiar with you, yeah, and so yeah, in that way it's really helped uh, grow my practice, mm-hmm. and I just never thought that was possible yeah yeah Yeah. i i believe that that is true because yelp used to be the only way to really like find out if someone's quote-unquote good or not and now with social i guess it could do you think it can go both ways though like can social media if you're sharing a little too much like tarnish that image like do you feel like you have to keep it professional because that's something i struggle with still i think quality uh over quantity for sure Mm -hmm. it's it's a tough one because there's a pressure of being consistent yeah right like so the algorithm picks you up there's a pressure of constantly having to make content but like i said i think it's more important to have you know good quality content Mm -hmm. versus just always posting because you don't want people to see you and go uh like i've I've seen that already or like Mm -hmm. that doesn't interest me Mm -hmm. and after a couple of those when you pop up they're just automatically going to do that right yeah yeah, the attention span is getting shorter and shorter now Mm -hmm. you know especially with tiktok and stuff so now it's like the first three seconds you have to grab their attention and so yeah it's 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 tough to find that right balance but i think it's still better to do it than not at all yeah, I agree. That's funny that you say that because your content is very consistent. Like when I go there, I know I'm going to see some cracking and I'm going to see your snaps. I'm going to see like, <laughs> you know, so that's funny that you say we have to change it up because you, everything you post is very consistent. So yeah. how has that worked for you? Because you're still growing. Yeah. Um, what makes you like, what makes your content you think like? I think have- it's, I think I have an easier time mm-hmm. than like, you know, someone in a different field, mm-hmm. especially like, because my content is my treatment. Right. And yeah. so all I have to do is showcase the different aspects of my treatments mm-hmm. and then be creative with that. So it's not that hard for me. I don't have to come up. I don't have to sit and think like today, like, what am I going to talk about? Yeah. You know, can I make a funny skit yeah. that's going to be different, intriguing? So I feel like I have an easier time in that sense. Um, but I still have to make sure the editing is good. I have to make sure that um, it's it's going to be concise. So there's still a lot of aspects that I'm playing playing mm-hmm, around with mm-hmm. learning. Yeah. Um, and then the consistency is really stressful. Editing. Yeah. You edit your own videos. I do. I was uh, just going to ask you about that. Adrian and I talk about it all the time. But do, are you like a one man show? You do right everything. Right now I am. Yeah. But I'm, I think I'm going to have to get a team yep. to help me. You have to like yeah. eventually. Especially when. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay, let's talk. Let's talk. Especially yeah. when you post on like multiple platforms now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's a slightly different audience for all the different mm-hmm, platforms mm-hmm, out there. Mm-hmm. Just takes a lot of time. Yep. To it's even even post, consuming. you know, yep. all the platforms. Take a I lot agree. Of time, so I agree. I have to figure that one out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but going back to social media, do you yeah. use it as a way to like obviously like build your brand and like put the word out there? Yeah, you know. So I was, you know, I told you I had my personal account mm-hmm. and then my my business account because my whole idea was I wanted to kind of be in the in the in the shadows and have my brand. My because I have 
different practitioners yeah. at the office. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. wanted to kind of promote that more mm-hmm. and kind of put that out there. So we started, we hired a team to help us start building that. Um, but what I realized was people want to see kind of behind the scenes, like yeah. what your lifestyle yep. is. Like, mm-hmm. what do you do? Who are you outside of the office? Mm-hmm. So my brand has become more about me now. Yeah. And that started to grow. Mm-hmm. And so now I have both. Um, and it's I'm still trying to figure it out because yeah. there's a part of me that like I want to work less yeah. you know, and kind of promote my brand more. Yeah. But now that my brand of myself is kind of growing, it's um, kind of making that difficult, I guess. Yeah. But I love it. I love what I'm doing. And um, I could still control like how much I work. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean that I have to work more per se. And people who find me will see other practitioners yeah. through my account. So. I see. I guess that's what's happening right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So how are you focusing more on your personal brand rather than seeing patients now? Or are you kind of digressing? No, to, I'm to still seeing patients. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm trying to juggle both. Yeah, It's, yeah, it's yeah. getting kind of hard. Yeah. yeah. So what, like, what's your personal brand? Like wellness, right? No, my personal brand, meaning my personal account. Oh, so oh, now oh. my personal account is public. It's no longer private. And so oh. my personal account Wait, when did that is, happen? Is that a new thing? Or is no, the this, account that... This was uh, a couple, three years ago. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So the account that we see you in, that's your personal account yeah. turned into like business yeah. too. Yeah, so oh. that's my personal account turned into a, a business creator account I now. See. Yeah. I still have a personal one. Oh, do you? Like, yeah, I, I, I'm like you. I don't really want to put too much out there, you know? Yeah. So how, how do you find the balance between like, how personal do you go? Like how? Yeah, uh, I've, I've archived a lot of pictures. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a okay. lot of my past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how personal do I go? That's a yeah, I'm still trying to figure that out too. Yeah. But I, I pretty much put myself out there, pretty much, like almost completely now. Oh. Yeah. You, what do you yeah. mean completely? Well, I just feel like um, there's parts of me that I felt like I was scared to share. Even Which like, part? Well, even like this, like what we talked oh. about today. Uh-huh. Even like, you know, like the coaching, the spiritual yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was scared to put that out there. Oh, why? Just again, because I, I, I felt like there are people who would be opposed to that mm. or kind of. Um, I don't know, triggered by it, I guess, you know, oh. so I was scared, but now I don't, yeah. I just, you know, put that out there. Are um, there people who are triggered? Like, do you get comments about like what you're doing is like, I don't know. Not what kind really. Of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the, for and the most part, I think part, it's also because I'm not like, so one way either. Mm-hmm. Like I'm open to other um, points of view and thoughts, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. 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 Other system. So I think that helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, I noticed that for going personal, I noticed yeah. that you're into like um, self-care, yeah. wellness. You were doing that for a while. Are you still doing that? Yeah. yeah so he did like vampire facials. What yeah. else did you You did the yeah. isolate? What is that pod thing called? What pod? The, it's like a... Oh, flow tanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what's that all about? Um, I've always wanted to try PRP for oh, my okay. joints, really, for my body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I discovered vampire facials is your PRP for the face because mm-hmm. I had client I had patients uh, women coming in and their skin would glow and I'd say what'd you do and yeah. she said oh, I got a vampire facial yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I said oh I want that uh-huh. and so one of my patients she is a uh, she has a, a med spa uh-huh. so we decided to do trades so she comes in to oh, see me and then yeah, I get to come in and see her so that's how it began. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. how I started doing like the facial skincare stuff uh-huh. is, is through that. So. Do you find that you do, you, I'm sure you meet a lot of like patients who have different professions. Do you do a lot of trading? Like, um, not a lot, but yeah. sometimes, yeah, sometimes if, if, if it can be mutually beneficial, then yeah, yeah. for if, like, like this, this uh-huh. one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been really beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe more for me, <laughs> but that's how I got into it. And so I've been doing that with her. Uh-huh. We also do laser and, I'm just exploring all the different options because one day um, I might expand and maybe offer that at oh. my office. So I want to try that out. Wow, myself, you you really you know? have everything, huh? Yeah, why well, I, I want to. Yeah. yeah. And then the float tank, um, float tank is like sensory deprivation, right? So have you done one? No, I want to try it, but I, I'm okay. scared. That yeah. Is so crazy. Yeah. Would you guys do it? Yeah. yeah, and you're supposed to be floating, right? It's salt, right? Yeah. Wait, so take us through that experience. Yeah. How? What was it like for you? So I've done it maybe three times. Oh, wow. Three okay. or four times. So the first one that I, I did, I was in a room, maybe like the size of this room. It's like it's like a chamber, yeah. right? You go in and there's no sound, there's no light, mm-hmm. and you're just floating, right? Yeah. And after a while, um, the, the temperature of the water is like your skin. 
Okay. Right. So after a while, you can't feel your body like it feels oh, like you're floating in space. Wow. You know, but this one was a little. It was a little sketchy because <laughs> the room was so big. Yeah. And I was kind of like floating around. It was sketchy because because you can't feel the walls because it's so oh. big. And so you get disoriented. Oh shoot! You know? Yeah. And I was kind of so like, yeah. <laughs> so it was a little scary. hard to relax. But then the second one that I did was like a pot. Yeah. So it's like a little egg shaped mm-hmm. thing yeah. that you go in. You can feel the walls. It's like right there. Okay. You can control the light. You can control um, the sound. Oh, so okay. for your first time, maybe don't go like fully like right away. Kind right. of ease into it. You know. Uh-huh. So you could like you know dim the light. You could gradually fade the music out. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one was way like. It was it was good because I knew where I was, yeah, so yeah, I wasn't yeah. worried about that. So is it is it like mental? Like you you need to feel the walls to feel safe, or for me it was. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Like um, because think about it, you're like, it's it's you're, there's no light, there's no sound. I know, yeah. It's pitch black. Yeah. You're just floating, That's and crazy. then you can't even feel your body. Yeah. So you at you some kinda, point are you like are my eyes even open or are yeah, they closed? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. That's crazy. And, and um, but it forces your brain to stop. So it puts your brain into a theta wave, which is like a dream state mm-hmm, wave, mm-hmm. Um, and it's really relaxing. Ooh. Yeah. So how long are you in there for? Like forty-five minutes? For like an hour. An hour. Yeah. Some of them are like two hours, oh but I gosh. think yeah, the first one I did was two hours. It was kind of too long. Yeah. But this one's an hour. And wow. It was just right. So do you go? Yeah. When, do you recommend it when you're like stressed? Yeah, I think everyone. You know, should try it at least once. Mm-hmm. You know, any other yeah. self care stuff that you do? Because you do some pretty interesting ones. Yeah, I stopped so seeing them. Are you still like showing them on your stories and no. stuff? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I try to get a massage. Oh yes. Right? At least uh, a couple times a month. Yeah. You know, once a week if I can. Yeah. I go to the gym. I work out. I do yoga. Um, I play basketball. Mm-hmm. So that's like my active self care. And then um, the. You know the massage, the float tank. I tried. I haven't done one in a while, so I mm-hmm. need to go do one. And um, apart from that, diet, um, rest. I guess that's like my self care regimen. Yeah. So yeah. I was gonna ask for social media. Have you yes. had any crazy stories? Like, you're a good looking guy. I'm sure yeah. you you get crazy DMs. <laughs> no How is it like from like a guy's point of, point of view being in social media? No comment. No, no comment. Kidding, kidding. I would say this. I think for guys, it's way less crazy than girls. I oh, think okay. girls are way more interesting. Because I've heard stories where girls get DMs like nonstop throughout the whole day. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So for me, <laughs> it's not like that. I've it, had it? some I've had some interesting ones. But Ooh, not, let's not, share. <laughs> oh, we're not sharing. <laughs> but not too yeah. Oh, They're not, far not too crazy. In between. Interesting. Yeah. I guess it's different, right? Yeah. No. I've I got, feel like I've you want to share. Pic- I've got some pictures. <laughs> we'll just I got. The, <laughs> I feel it from here. <laughs> we feel that you want to share. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's safe for work though. Uh, oh my god. Is there one crazy thing that sticks out? Yeah. Tell. That's what you're here for. <laughs> All right, I'll share. So, um, I got a message from a guy, right? Ooh. Ooh, I did not see it yeah, going yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And I was just being friendly, you know, and he started off just like, oh, hey, um, I like your content or whatever. And I'm like, cool, thanks. And he's like, um, do you know any guys with uh, a, a lot of testosterone? And I was like, I just laughed because yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. that was random. That's yeah. funny. And I guess because I was responding to him, he thought I was kind of like into him, I guess, or mm. like interested because I was just being kind of friendly but I thought it was funny too I thought he was just like cracking jokes and then then that was it you know I thought I was done with that and then he sent me a dick pic oh my god (laughs) but it wasn't just like a regular dick pic it was like was the face and everything in there no no face but he like uh, he wrapped it in um like a tortilla what the and and put like ketchup so like it looked like food at at first but it it was like disturbing oh my god it kind of like it kind of traumatized me, to be honest. Yeah, uh, for sure. If it was just like a normal yeah. typical, I'd have been like, all right, you know, cool, like oh whatever. Oh my god. Maybe like even flattered, but yeah. this one was like, kind of <laughs> just like made me feel like, like yeah. dirty. Dirty. Yeah, yeah just, of course. You know, and, and I realized like, wow, this is what women go through. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You know, yeah. it's a crime now. You can get fired for that. Yeah, for unsolicited, unsolicited. Good. It should oh, be really? a crime. Yeah. So you can. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, that's why I didn't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's good to know that that happens. And, yeah. you know, that happens to women all the time, unfortunately. 
yeah i don't open pictures because i'm just like no but but that one was pretty creative well should we end it there i mean like i feel like there, nothing can beat that <laughs> so tell the audience where they can find you all your social media platforms so for my uh account dr ernest kim d-r-e-r-n-e-s-t-k-i-m pretty much on all platforms right now tiktok youtube oh wow uh twitter instagram <laughs> Uh, Facebook. Wow. Um, and then my office is back on point wellness. So B A C K back on O N point P O I N T wellness W E L N E S S. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for you so being much our for first guest for this yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Judy Post Podcast. I was so excited to wrap up episode one that I forgot to do an outro. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, please like, share, comment, subscribe. And until next time, bye-bye.